Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to defend. And today we'll be discussing about cloud security and learning about how we can protect many of our cloud workloads, our deployments online, how we could still continue to serve the hundreds of millions of users who may be assessing your different kind of applications, many different use cases that you have for deploying many of your workloads onto the cloud. So what exactly is cloud? So the first thing we want to think about is as more and more enterprises are transitioning onto the cloud because of the key advantages in terms of the ability to focus on more of the higher level offerings in terms of application level, in terms of platform levels. And of course, there are three key areas that we can look at. Number one is software as a service, platform as a service, as well as infrastructure as a service. So this is what we call the shared responsibility model. So this is a responsibility that is shared together with the cloud provider. So in this case, if you're deploying, say, software as a service only, all right, so there is more specific controls that you have to put in place at the software layer. And of course, as you move down the stack, including both the platform as a service as well as software as a service. So you have to manage the security on both of these levels. And finally, infrastructure as a service. So if you're deploying your operating systems, you're deploying your virtual private clouds onto the different cloud providers and vendors, then you have to be able to configure all across the stack, including your operating system level, your network level, your platform as a service, and your software as a service. They're all deployed within your private cloud or onto your public cloud environment. As such, this is a shared responsibility model that is being utilized across by many different cloud providers. So there is increasing levels of responsibility as you take on more stack inside the workloads. So I want to go back in terms of the security controls in the cloud. So I want to go back into the cyber attack chain or the MITRE attack framework. All right, so over here, the whole idea is to look from the hacker's point of view. How would they continue to conduct operations, hacking operations against your cloud workloads? So again, if we look at the most left side, we have the reconnaissance, weaponization, the delivery of tags, exploitation, installation, command and control, as well as the final part, which is on actions and objectives. So by looking at this, we can map back again. So how would the hackers be able to scan for your publicly exposed instances of workloads, what kind of services are you offering through your cloud platforms that could easily be flagged out by the hackers? What versions are those services running? And after which, those data configuration, application version numbers, operating system levels, the data path that transacts from your web application server all the way down to your databases, all of the versions and controls in it, what kind of information can they gather based on their interaction with your site, based on your interaction with your mobile application, and from there on, which provides the opening into the rest of your deployments. So what can you find? All right, either through search engines, through assessing and going through the normal data path, what can they actually gather from working and exposure into your systems. And after which, the hackers will then start weaponizing. Right? So was, they will start creating payloads, either via, say, for example, SQL injection, via buffer overflows, via all these tutorials that you've seen on the channel. And of course, it would begin delivering all these attacks. Right? And all the delivery can be through multiple places. All right? So if you have different cloud providers who are running different virtual private clouds, they could also be subjected to different kind of attacks based on delivery mechanisms, especially in terms of configuration and security hardening. If they're not properly in control, then those delivery can be done very, very quickly. And as you're, for example, if you're running infrastructure as a service and you have, say, a Windows server that you're running or Linux server that you're running, and there is a human interaction. So the administrator of those servers are able to actually, say, for example, surf the internet log into their emails and able to download attachments that in itself can be a form of delivery opening for the hackers where they could send an attachment and the attachment can lead to the complete compromise of the system right so there are multiple delivery mechanisms that can be utilized as part of the hack and this is a part where the exploitation installation comes into play where the hacker now has access and control into the system so they would need a reverse connection all the way out into the internet then the question is how can we identify 
what kind of malicious IP addresses are there, where are the hackers connecting to, and what kind of data are they transferring ultimately back to the command and control server, and what kind of processes has been spawned out as a result of those hacks, and finally, what are the actions and the objectives of the hackers, do they have full control, at which stage of the cyber attack are they currently at. So of course, the MITRE attack framework has a huge list of all these possible tactics and techniques that the hackers could be utilizing and ultimately going back at the most bottom part of the slide which are the security controls so very importantly how can we stop reconnaissance how can we stop the hackers being able to weaponize their payloads and gain full access into the systems and stopping them from being able to deliver and install additional processes into the system and ultimately giving them control from a remote command and control server so if you look at the bottom side a lot of times by setting strong secure firewall policies, the ingress and egress, looking at how the services and the workloads can communicating with one another, having a approved list of how data should be transacted from the application server all the way to the databases, what are considered as approved lists and what are the disallowed lists of payloads that are actually being injected into the system. Are there sanitization? Do you have antivirus running in all your systems? Do you have configuration checks at all times against the hackers? So all this, again, ultimately we can map back to, for example, National Institute of Standards and Technology or even under Center for Internet Security, Security Controls. So making sure that you have all those controls in place and then you can map them back. For example, in this case here that I have helped you create it, you can map them back very quickly all right, based on the cyber attack chain or MITRE attack framework on how we are able to actually try to stop those attacks. So here we have a technical architecture. So on the most left side, we have the hacker coming in through from the internet and assessing into say your Apache server and we have a Win server 2016 and you have a Microsoft SQL database at the end is storing all this data. So we can also think of the attacks not just from external adversaries, so it could also be insider threats. So in this case, we have insider threat on the bottom right side that you have a select all from user. So we can see that maybe some of your users have a lot of privileges inside the system and they could easily query all this information out and some of your databases may have tables that contain sensitive and critical data. So you can look at credit card information, data birth, addresses, and so on. So all this data could easily be found even from insiders. All right, so the whole idea is how can we build a security technical architecture? So we can firstly, going from the most left side again, we have users and hacker who are coming in and there is a web application firewall. So WAF stands for web application firewall. They would actually do the first round of filtering sanitization of inputs, what are allowed and what are not allowed before it actually reaches into the application server. And of course, we also have DDoS, all right, DDoS protection, distributed denial of service. So if there are specific IP addresses that are coming into your systems, and some of these IP addresses are known, all right, from the threat intelligence, from security researchers across the world who has highlighted some of the servers with malicious activities, immediately we can stop and block those malicious IP addresses from doing a direct attack against your systems. And of course, at the bottom of WAF and DDoS, we have identity access management. So this is the part where we could introduce, for example, governance, auditing, as well as risk-based accesses into your systems, meaning that we have single sign-on capability, and on top of that, we have identity and governance, meaning that we can flag out which user may have over privileges to more systems and applications. All right, so all these are different ways that we can introduce multi-factor authentication, single sign-on, looking at the user, looking at their attributes, whether they have any risky behaviors, Maybe this user usually connect from one particular city and now this user is connecting from another part of the world using a completely different device attribute, a completely different cursor attributes. All those can be highlighted as increasing risks level before you're assessing given permission to access into your systems. And on the right side, all right, we have on the top right side, continuous policy check certifications and audit. So we are able to actually audit your private cloud environment, audit across all your workloads, and be able to check out, for example, your Win server, your Microsoft SQL instance, your Apache web server, right? whether they have any misconfiguration, whether they are out of date, 
all right and all these different security checks are put in place to harden the servers that you have deployed so that you can prevent against many of those easy simple hacks that the hackers could use easily utilize and in terms of data protection we also have to introduce encryption or data monitoring right so on the most right side if you look at the database table right now we can see that the credit card information the password the mobile they have either been masked out meaning that the hackers or even insider will no longer be able to actually see those data or two they have been encrypted encrypted meaning that you have to manage the key as well to those encryption all right so it can be encrypted down to the columns rows levels so all this introduction of security mechanisms are very important because if you look at the bottom part you have insider threat and firstly is to look at who are the ones issuing out those queries into the database system do they have direct access to looking at all this private information financial data and we are able to stop those queries from coming in or at the same time if they do get in meaning that maybe the hackers crafted a payload and managed to bypass the waf web application firewall then we'll be able to very quickly all right even if the hacker managed to pull out all those data all they see will be gibberish data because they do not have access to the encryption key and finally at the bottom right side making sure that you have security operation center running so if you look at the there's an icon there like a cctv camera that's monitoring auditing everything that's happening and at the same time flagging out if there's any anomaly if there is any possible threats coming in so it's kind of like a cctv capturing what everyone is doing and on top of that being able to flag out when there are any malicious behaviors at which stage are those cyber attacks coming in and also in terms of incident response so once again, I hope you have learned something valuable in today's lecture. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And I'll try my best to answer any of your queries. And like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.